verse 12 to verse 13. Let no man despise thy youth. But be thou an example of the believers in word, in conversation, in charity, in spirit, in faith, in purity. Till I come, give attendance to reading, to exhortation, and to doctrine. The Lord bless his word in Jesus' name. Our objective is twofold. First, it is understanding character. And second, it is understanding the development process of character. By way of introduction, there are four critical things. To note, one, the most significant impact of Christianity is character transformation. Acts chapter 11 verse 26, and the disciples, and when he had found him, he brought him into Antioch, unto Antioch. And it came to pass that the whole year they assembled themselves with the church and taught much people. And the disciples were called Christians first in Antioch. The most significant impact of Christianity is character transformation. It is not a title. It's not a church sticker. It is character transformation. Number two, the followers of Christ are known by their fruit or character and not just by church attendance. They are known by their fruit. Matthew chapter 7, verse 15 all the way to verse 20. He said, beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing. But inwardly they are ravening wolves. Ye shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thongs or figs of thistles? Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit. But a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit. Neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Wherefore, by their fruits, you shall know them. The duration of church attendance is what makes a person a Christian. By the manifestation of character, you know who they are. Somebody could be born in church. And yet not a Christian. That is number two. Number three. The work of Christian ministry. Is the development of godly character. The development of godly character. That is the work of Christian ministry. Is the development of godly character. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 11 to 14. Godly character in the lives of the people. And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come in the unity of the faith. And of the knowledge of the Son of God. Unto a perfect man. Unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Can stop there. So the pastor's work. The apostle's work. 
The prophet's work is the development of godly character in the people. The major work of a pastor is not the release of miracles. It's not the distribution of prophecies. It's the development of godly character. Where someone is coming to church and character is not changed is a waste of church. Your, your father cannot testify. Your husband cannot testify. Your wife cannot testify. Your children can't testify. Your co-workers can't testify. Those who know you can't testify that you are a child of God, you are not. The work of Christian ministry is the development of godly character. And finally, number four, Christian character development is a process. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 15. It is a process. It says, but speaking the truth in love, we may grow up into him in all things. Speaking the truth in love, we may grow up into him in all things. We may grow up. So it is a growth. Character development is not a destination. It's an adventure. We grow. We grow. Having said all of that, what are the factors that facilitate Christian character development? I wish that I can, I trust God to have all the time to say all these points. Number one is a sense of vision. And purpose for godly character. A sense of vision and purpose for godly character. Daniel chapter 1 verse 8, the Bible said, Daniel proposed in his heart that he will not defile himself with a portion of the king's meat. A sense of purpose. A sense of purpose. Vision and purpose. How is that? Two things. First, it involves knowing exactly the kind of person you want to be in life. What kind of person do you want to be? What kind of life do you want to live? And who are the role models of that kind of life? A sense of purpose and vision. What kind of person do you want to be? What kind of life do you want to live? I grew up in a setting, a family setting, that gave me a determination. That I will live a marriage that will be a pattern marriage. What, my, what I saw my children can't see. It's a vision, a purpose. I saw Kenneth and Gloria Copeland neat. I saw T.L. and Daisy Osborne neat. I saw Charles and Francis Hunter neat. And I looked at myself and said, this is the kind of life I will live. I will live such a life where I will stand shoulder to shoulder in ministry with my life, wife. Minister with fire and passion. If you can't see it, you can't seize it. And no devil can stop you from seizing what you have seen. And the dream you dream for yourself is superior to what another person dreams. Anybody, for example, praying for my marriage not to work now can multiply himself a million times. He has failed. He failed abundantly. One zillion demons. Why? Because Daniel proposed. Ask your neighbor, say, what have you proposed? Ask somebody, say, what is your vision? 
What kind of person do you want to be? Hallelujah. That is the kind of thing that makes a man say, I, I want to live and I don't want to, I don't want to end as a divorced man. So whatever it takes, I will make my marriage work. It's a purpose. A vision. Whatever it takes. A young lady said, she saw the way young girls were hanging around lecturers in school. That was my wife. When she was a young girl. She said she's going to pass very well. So that she doesn't need to beg anybody to cross. She made the decision. And the decision made her. Went to school sharp. Became a doctor. Under 23. So what is your, your vision? What is your passion? I'm the one talking. You are clapping for somebody else. <laughs> Hallelujah. Does that make any sense to you? Nothing happens by accident. You make choices. Choices make you. I'll come to that later on. There must be that sense of vision. There must be that sense of purpose. This is what I want out of life. And I will have it. The devil notwithstanding. It involves knowing exactly the kind of person you want to be in life. Secondly, it involves being a person who lives by conviction and not to the consensus. You live by conviction, not to the consensus. You are the kind of person who is not living by the, by the opinions and ideas of people. You know the reason why there are so many people today who don't have a mind of their own is because they are living by the mind of the world. You are the kind of person that says, if everybody decides to go to hell, I will go to heaven. You are the kind of person that says, if everybody decides to collapse to the floor, I will stand on my feet. Being a person who lives by conviction, not to the consensus. You are not the kind of person of majority carries the vote. You are the kind of person that will take a stand if you have to stand alone. And that stand is by God. So this is very, very important. Especially among young people. Everybody goes one way and then everybody and they start going the same way. Everybody dresses one kind and everybody starts dressing like that. Everybody does the hair one way and everybody starts doing it like that. Am I communicating? Conviction. One day, I, I put pocket square in my, in my suit. I told you the story before. And one of my friends said, that does not rain anymore. That these days, nobody puts pocket square in the pocket anymore. You just, um, so I told him, I said, who rains it? <laughs> who determines the rain? If it does not rain anymore, I rain it. <laughs> you, don't, you don't live your life at the mercy of what everybody thinks is of everybody is doing. You live your life as a pace setter, a frontliner, a road pointer. You live your life as such. God is speaking to you, say amen. So that is point number one. It is a sense of vision and purpose for godly character. Number two is feeding on and living in the word of God. Feeding on and living in the word of God. Feeding on and living in the word of God. Psalm 119 verse 9. He said, wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? He said, by taking heed dear to according to thy word. Then verse 11. He said, thy word have I hid in my heart that I may not sin against you. John chapter 15 and in verse 3. He said, now you are clean through the word which I have spoken to you. Anybody who feeds on the word and who lives in 
inside the world will be a good person. He will be a kind person, a loving person. He will be a person of quality character. Why is that so? I give you two reasons. First, the word of God changes mindsets. And mindset affects lifestyle. The word of God changes mindsets. And mindset affects lifestyle. Every time there is a change in mentality, there will be a change in activity. The Bible said in Romans chapter 12 verse 1 to 2. I beseech you therefore brethren by the message of the living God that you present your bodies a living sacrifice holy and acceptable unto God which is your reasonable service and be not conformed to this world but be, be transformed be changed by the renewing of your mind and that is by the word of God the word of God changes mindset when you see a man whose mind is, is thinking like the people of the world he's a person that is distant from the world he changes mindset and mindset Change it affects lifestyle. Secondly, the word of God is a mirror for life. And reveals where adjustments need to be made in life. It's a mirror for life. In James chapter 1 verse 23 all the way to verse 25. He said, for if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer. He is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass, in a mirror. For he beholdeth himself and goeth his way and straightway forgeteth what manner of man is. He just looked at the mirror and left. Those are those who read the word and don't do it. He said, but whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continueth therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his word. So, the word of God. How many of you know, when you stand before the mirror, the mirror may show you that there is a, a tissue, something right here. Is that correct? Or that your hair is not in order or something. And if you want to adjust yourself, where do you do it? After you leave the mirror, where do you do it? Right in front of the mirror. You are there with the mirror until the mirror confirms that you can go. That is how the word is. He said if you, if you look at the, if you, if you study the word and don't do anything about it, you just looked at the mirror and left away. But the word of God is mirror for life. It shows you that you are not praying enough. It shows you that you are talking too much. It shows you that you are lying too much. It shows you that you are exaggerating. It shows you that you are taking things that are not yours. It shows you that you are far from God. It shows you that you are unequally yoked together with unbelievers. The word of God shows you that. And once you see that, you adjust your life and you step off. That is why when people are far from the world, they become terrible in character. Is God speaking to anybody at all? That was number two. So, a sense of vision and purpose. Number two, feeding and living in the word of God. Number three, living in God's presence, in prayer and communion. Living in God's presence, in prayer and communion. You know of the, of the, of the, of the life of jo Jacob in Genesis chapter 32, verse 24 to verse 28. And Jacob was left alone. And they wrestled a man with him. Until the breaking of the day. And when he saw that he prevailed not against him. He touched the hollow of his thigh. And the hollow of Jacob's thigh was out of joint. As he wrestled with him. And he said let me go for the day breaketh. And he said I will not let thee go. Except thou bless me. And he said unto him what is thy name. And he said Jacob. And he said, thy name shall be, called, shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel. For as a prince has thou power with God and with men and has prevailed. Now, this was Jacob at the place of prayer. And in that place of prayer, he had encounters with God. That changed him from Jacob to Israel. Jacob was not just the name of a person. And Israel is not just the name of a nation. But Jacob was a behavior. 
And Israel was a behavior. Jacob was a character. The Jacobic character is the character of deception. That, the name literally means con man, conny man. Deceived, deceitful man, serpentine man. Have you seen serpentine people before? People you have seen, you thought you are dealing with real people. And you don't know they are serpentine, slippery. You wouldn't believe. That was how it was with Jacob. And so he met another serpentine man by the name Laban. They dealt with each other for 21 years. And God said now, as you have tarried in my presence, I am not just enlarging your capacity, turning you from a person into a nation. I want to turn you from the person you used to be into the person you are meant to be. Two things you will note. One, the place of prayer is the place of character transformation. Where the person you used to be gives way for the person God wants you to be. When you see men of prayer and women of prayer, they are the humblest of people, kindest of people. <laughs> you can feel something when you come around them. So serene, so tranquil. You can hardly get words from their mouth. Hallelujah. You can. Now, so the place of prayer. Now, the meaning of this is prayer does not only change things. Prayer changes the people who pray. It changes people. That is one. So, leketeko bagalaga braga daga jaga lata firo toko babaratisa. 30 minutes, one hour, two hours. It changes you. It changes you. One woman came all the way from Paracourt yesterday. I think, okay, on Saturday. She is still here in this service. She said, Pastor, whatever you are doing, keep on doing it. He said, the kind of testimonies and miracles and things we are hearing are unheard of. Just keep on doing it. He said, sir, can I ask you a question? How long do you pray? I said, calm down, calm down. It changes the person who prays. You are on your bed at home and somebody is seeing you somewhere in Australia being delivered from something that manifests into physical manifestations. Prayer changes the person who pray. So, the place of prayer is not just the place where needs are met. It's the place where lives are changed. Where lives are changed. Where your life is practically changed. Secondly, under this point of prayer, the place of prayer is the place of company with God. And company affects character. When you pray, you, just, you have just entered the vicinity of God. And whosoever walketh with wise men shall be wise. Proverbs 13 verse 20. But a companion of fools shall be destroyed. What is our key? Number one. The sense of vision and purpose. Number two. Feeding on and living in the word of God. Number three. Living in his presence. In prayer and communion. Number four. Living and flowing. In the spirit. Living. And flowing. In the spirit. Galatians chapter 5. Verse 22. The Bible said. But the fruit of the spirit. Spirit is love, 
joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such, there is no law. The fruit of the Spirit. Please take note of two things. The Spirit of God is not just for the manifestation of gifts, but for the development of fruit. The Spirit of God is, is not just designed for the manifestation of gifts, but for the development of fruit. And fruit means character. Can have the gift of tongues and interpretation. Word of knowledge, word of wisdom, discerning of spirits, healings, working of miracles. And yet you, when you come home, your wife has to take cover. Children have to take cover. Driver is under pressure. Cook are under pressure. Security is under pressure. But you can cast out devils. <laughs> can pray in tongues. But as strong headed like a naughty bulldog. You know, bulldog is already naughty, but a naughty one. Any tongue that has not changed your character is a useless tongue. That is not changing your character. It's not changing your behavior. It's useless praying in tongues. Useless. It has not reduced your loquacity and verbal diarrhea. Talking cha 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 like a parrot. It has not reduced pride. You have nothing on your raising shoulder. It has not reduced anger. I wanted to talk to a young man the other day. I want to sit him down. And I said, can you please tell me what are you proud about? What are you proud over now? You don't have anything. <laughs> Am I communicating? Please, I want your tongue to begin to change your life. Change your behavior. Change your character. Until those who don't know that you go to church can testify that that is a child of God. Am I communicating at all? We have the gifts of the spirit. And we have the fruit of the spirit. Among Pentecostals, we celebrate the gifts and we underplay the fruit. That is why some of the evangelicals don't take Pentecostals serious. The middle level churches, not the one you call orthodox, the, the ones in the middle. You know the ones I'm talking about. The Baptist, the Evangelic, the Equa and so on. They keep on hammering on meekness, on love, and this. We are um, doing a lot of power. Somebody's living with a man. And comfortable in church. And somebody is eyeing people's husband and seated in church. It's time to, to let, let's pray. The hands are lifted. Drop the hand first. What I'm saying is it too brutal? Saying here, let us begin to pray until fruit begins to develop. 
until fruit begins to develop. You can't be a Christian and sit down and scatter somebody's reputation and character. You can't. You can't call yourself a Christian. You can't. Am I communicating? Even there are